of all the muscles that would benefit from using machines, um, it's really the hamstrings aren't one of them. You, you don't need machines at all to no. develop incredible hamstrings. We're back and we got new lights. Look how nice I look right now in the beautiful new studio lights. We're getting way more professional and it's only going to keep getting better. And that's because of our awesome viewers. Thank you so much for your great comments. Here's the giveaway to celebrate the new lights. The RGB bundle. I'm going to give away RGB bundle access to one of you viewers. So this is Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. These are the core Maps programs. One of you is going to get free access to all three of them, but you got to do the following. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and click on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the RGB bundle. Also, we're running a huge sale right now. Check this out, right? So Map Strong is a strongman inspired workout program and Maps Powerlift is a powerlifting program. So both strength building, both very different, but both also complementary. We put them together in what is now called the Maps Power Bundle. Now, normally if you were to get them at retail, both of them would cost you 300 bucks, but right now, both of them will be $79.99. That's it. So 79 99 and you get full access for life to Maps Powerlift and Map Strong with our sale, which is going on right now. So if you're interested, head over to mapsmarch.com and sign up. All right, here comes the show. Fasting is grossly overrated. Look, all of the purported benefits of fasting, right? The cell autophagy, the insulin sensitizing effects, the reduced inflammation can all be attributed to the reduction in calories. It's not really the fasting. How dare you? You did not say that just a couple of years ago. I know. Well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's interesting is, uh, well, there's a couple of different things. Uh, and we could talk about, the, I, I do believe there are some benefits to fasting, but it's not what, what is often sold. But let's stick to the physiological benefits that constantly get sold, right? The cell autophagy, mm -hmm. it's great for insulin sensitivity, reduces inflammation. When you compare fasting to just regular old calorie restriction, it's identical. There's no additional benefits to the fasting. So the benefits that people are seeing with fasting is just because they're they're eating less calories. Well, wasn't this the research that uh, was it Walter Longo Walter did? Longo. Isn't that what his whole thing was about? Was if I put them on this you know 500 calorie diet for a week, would all those same markers yeah, the fasting improve? mimicking diet, right? Yeah, that's exactly what he did. Exactly. Now, now remember, Dr. Dr. Walter Longo's fasting mimicking diet was based off of uh, what they saw for cancer, right? Uh -huh. So, fasting before chemotherapy reduced some of the negative consequences or side effects of uh, of chemotherapy and increased the ability of the chemotherapy to kill cancer cells. So he's like, okay, can we find a way to get these benefits without completely starving people? Because mm. yeah, especially if you're in that situation, right? You're about to go into chemo. You probably already lost weight because you have cancer. Kind of a tough position to be in. Right. And what they found was indeed that you saw a lot of those effects. But when you're talking about the average person, you know, they, they sell fasting as this great way to do all these incredible physiological benefits. But it's the same, the same stuff you get with calorie restriction. Um, now. Does that mean there's no benefits to fasting? No, I think there are, but I think that they are all, uh, I guess, um, psychological or mental or dare I say spiritual for the right people. Because I think for the wrong people, it's also bad, right? You take somebody who has uh, eating dysfunction, which in the past might be, you know, for them might have been borderline anorexia or bulimia. Fasting is a terrible approach. But if you take someone who's like super afraid to miss a meal, oh no, I need to build muscle, I have to eat every two hours, you know, this was me, right? When I was younger, fasting had a lot of psychological benefits because it got me to kind of break those chains. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, um, yeah, there's really no additional benefits from fasting that you, you wouldn't get just from caloric restriction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, we've talked about this quite a few times at this point, uh, but really, yeah, for me, it was, it, you know, personally, it was about being able to not be completely um, on this clock, on the schedule. Like I'm like, I'm not going to get, you know, uh, I'm going to lose muscle gain and, and, yeah. and all this stuff because I'm not like consuming protein at the right timing. I'm not like completely fueling my body all the time. And so, uh, you just realize too, just, you know, your patterns, uh, human behavior of like uh, throughout the day, like constantly, I'm just thinking about when's my next meal and to be able to kind of step outside of that, you get a little bit more insight in terms of your own, you know, behavior. Totally. totally. Now, is there a type of client that you guys, I mean, I think I've brought this up before that I would use it for competitors Yes. Um, to interrupt that, you know, and 
I was like you, where I used to have this fear of, oh my God, if I didn't hit my protein intake for the day. Yeah, or, watching the clock too. Yeah, oh my God, if I didn't hit my calories that, you know, the and and why it was um, you know, it was reinforced because I'd get on the scale and the scale would show that I was down, you know, I was down weight. I didn't eat enough calories today. Mm -hmm. And so of course in my mind I went, Oh my God, I lost, you know, four pounds today. It was all muscle because I feel because I look flat because I'm low mm -hmm. in calories. And so I, if it would feel like it was all muscle that had gone away. And I think for that type of person that has this, you know, psychological dependence on eating every two hours, I, I like to interrupt that for somebody like that. But for everybody else, I, I really didn't see that much value in in incorporating fasting. Yeah, you know, it's funny that, because it changed so radically, right? When we were all early trainers, fasting wasn't a thing in the fitness space. Now you saw some people maybe in the spiritual wellness side that would talk about fasting. And fasting's existed in religious practices forever. It's, it's a form of detachment. Mm -hmm. And I could see some value there. But in our space, fasting was not a thing at all. And when clients would come in and say they skip meals, it was like, don't skip meals. You got to eat. You can't starve yourself. That's a yeah. terrible thing. And then all of a sudden, we had this huge you know, uh, reversal where fasting is the greatest thing. And I get it. You see that in fitness, right? Where it goes from one end to the other. Yeah. But it went so extreme. And then you had these kind of fasting zealots talk about cell autophagy, anti-inflammatory effects. And they're talking about all these beneficial physiological effects as if they're unique to fasting. Well, now we have studies to show they're not. They're not unique to fasting. If you just cut your calories, you'll get those same benefits. Now, that doesn't mean that fasting is or isn't for everybody. I think if, you, if it works for you, that's totally fine. But you can't sell it anymore as this right. like physiological miracle that you can't get from you know regular caloric restriction. You do. You do. You cut your calories, you cut your proteins, your carbs, your fats, and you compare yourself to somebody who eats in a, you know, a feeding window, a short feeding window, both people being calorie, you know, a calorie deficit, same effects. You don't see any big, any big. Well, difference. I mean, if it works for you in terms of like being able to kind of uh, keep a certain maintenance of calories, like you know, people eat in in totally different schedules based off of their work and their lifestyle and all that stuff. So it's like, you know, it's it's not like coming at people who have like this window that they have a nice structure with that works for them. Uh, it's really just like realize that you just are reducing your calories to this amount, and all those benefits are the same. It's not because of you know this this specific window you've created. Well, what's your guys' thoughts on that? Because there's a lot of people that would, would make that argument like, oh, you know, it just works really well with me because, you know, if I don't eat till two or three in the afternoon, yeah. I, it keeps my calories down. But then I would I would question, you know, are they getting enough uh, nutrients that their body needs to build muscle and get, for long-term health? Like, yeah. sure, like in the, in a in a short, short term. Is that going to mess with their hormones in terms right. of- Right. So like I, in, in the short term, I understand that, okay, it could be a good strategy to keep somebody to keep their calories down a little bit. But then one of the things I always found when I would do these, you know, if you were doing consistently intermittent fasting every single day, mm. only eating in that window- I I mean, I, I already have a hard time hitting my protein intake with all 24 hours available right. to me. But if I condensed it down to the six or eight hour window, okay, sure, it helped me not over consume calories. But then I now had that same challenge that I had before as, as a young guy lifting weights, which was I couldn't hit those yeah. 200 grams of protein. That's every a good day. point. Yeah, you might be a bit nutrient deficient. You should probably test that, right? Because yeah. it would be hard to be consistently hitting all of those. Yeah, totally. And, you know, okay, so evolutionarily speaking, because there's an evolutionary argument, right, that humans evolved with long periods of time without food. I've talked about this in our early podcasts, and I speculate this is probably why you see the benefits. But it's becoming quite clear it's not the without food pe uh, period that gave us those benefits, but rather the low calories. So, it's, so it really doesn't make a difference. Now, to what you're saying, I agree. I think for some people it works okay, and for other people it doesn't. Like, if you take somebody, like you were saying, Adam, who's trying to hit certain targets, you know what you end up with when they have this small eating window is like this restrict calories mm -hmm. or no food and then binge. No food and then binge. Yeah. That's dysfunctional eating, you know? And I know because I started to fall in that pattern myself when I messed around with it, trying to eat the amount of calories that I needed, believing that it was the, the, the eating window that was providing me the benefits. So like, okay, I got to eat 2,500 calories in two meals or I, I eat 3,000 calories in two meals. Well, now I'm eating two 1,500 calorie meals or together within, you know, a couple hours of each other. Yeah. And it felt like I was kind of stuffing myself, right? So so those are the things you kind of want to, you know, pay attention to. Um, but yeah, caloric restriction does the same thing. So it's not that there's no magic to the fasting aside from maybe the, like I said, the, the detachment effects, the detachment benefits that you may get. But then again, that's 
true for anything that you fast from, like electronics, you could fast from, you can yeah. fast from caffeine, you'll get some of those effects and it's more psychological than Well, I'm sure we else. just made a couple people angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's be honest. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Speaking of electronics, did you see uh, the big recall on Fitbit? No, what happened? 1.7 million uh, Fitbits recall. Dude, recall, Re why? Yeah, why? Why were so they the, back? what is it, the uh, lithium or ion battery or whatever it's battery that's inside there was uh, burning people. Oh, it was, that's it was, a legit yeah, recall. Yeah, I think they had like 190 something complaints of it heating up wow. and actually burning people, so they re ended up recalling uh, 1.7 million. What I haven't seen, so I saw, I read that news. Uh, but I can really feel this burning. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> It's working. <laughs> Ah, what the I hell? bet you there was some people that actually yeah. thought like that. Maybe Doug, <laughs> could, maybe steps. Doug can pull up the the ticker. I'm curious. Nike, yeah, we we it, almost bought Fitbit last year. I think we almost. Yeah, we did. Can you remember yeah. before he pulls it up? So before he pulls it up, I think I know what it was. The ticker was at back then. I think it was around six dollars. We almost bought Fitbit. We or, did. Did we buy yeah, Fitbit? No, no, no. Well, we it was love because yeah. there's some restrictions in terms of like uh, the data. I remember that was like an issue. Wait, like, who owns Fitbit? Uh, Fitbit. Is it just Fitbit? Someone. Oh no! Somebody acquired them. Somebody right. acquired. Yeah, them, right. somebody did. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I don't remember I don't the name of the company, you know. but did you know? brilliant marketing on Fitbit's part, right? We're going to permanently brand people's arms. <laughs> 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 you know, look around, some Fitbit on your yeah. arm. Yeah, that's I, crazy. It actually burned people. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. Just are you sure about Fitbit being acquired? I didn't I'm know they were sure, acquired yeah. by somebody. Uh -huh. Wow. Um, what are they at right now, Doug? What is that? So they were at six dollars when we almost bought them. Like a year. Cisco or, or a big company like that or something. Yeah. Really? I think so. Doug, do you know how to read? Uh, we'll have to definitely the look at that. Stock prices there. Well, I'm seeing two thousand five hundred forty-three. Guarantee it's wrong. not two thousand. That does not seem right at yeah, all. That'd be no. more valuable than Amazon. I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is he looking at? Uh, just, I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What I'm oh, okay, at. Justin, you're right. It's Google closes Google. two point one billion acquisition of Fitbit as Justice Department probe continues. Google. That's right. Okay, this can't be right though. The company announced that in. 2019 it was last year when we were looking at the ticker and i know it was around six dollars well if google owns it then maybe we're looking at the price of google that is what, that uh, is, oh, what is, that. is that what it is well, it, says, it says fitbit here but it says owned by alphabet which is google so yeah, okay. oh it is google yeah okay uh, no wonder it's at 2500 i'm like yeah. damn we missed out on that one Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not another one <laughs> yeah if it was at six dollars uh, we really missed that, out. that would literally be that like the fifth oh time. no even don't even i bring swear to god anymore. you know that the challenge with your your predictions is it only so far it only works if we don't the take ones action. we don't yeah. do yeah. So I'm wondering if we, yeah. like, we take action doesn't work. We don't take. Well, action. Well, maybe I, one of us invest, you know, as he says it without telling anybody. Yeah. That would make me more mad. That would then that would be like HubSpot when he did that with HubSpot because I told him to do HubSpot. <laughs> he did. I didn't do it. So yeah. and that went bought stuff. Mm. Hey, I want to go off subject for oh. a second, but uh, you guys look beautiful with the with the lights. In oh, the I know, isn't it? Uh, it's a nice little change in here. Yeah, my it looks my really white nice. skin's glowing. Made yeah. a nice investment and in trying to make it look uh, all spiffy and good. So we'll see. Well, we'll see how it looks on. speaking of <laughs> looking a certain way, I cannot believe that Jason Phillips allowed you to wear a fucking taco shirt <laughs> on the sales ad page. The, what is he thinking? Do yourself a favor and go Bro, to this, this sales on, page. Is it, was it the taco eggplant? Yes, oh, it was yeah. a taco eggplant shirt <laughs> oh, on, a, on, a, on a landing page for their NCI pitch towards coaching. And Dude. I do remember you asking him. Well, so it's... Because I didn't know what you... I remember I, re, I remember when he was here the last. level of professionalism. And, I know, and he asked, he asked Sal, hey, Sal, could I do a quick video with you? And Sal's like, yeah, sure. And then... Uh, they, have, they, they were they're running a 50% off enrollment and we had Jason on the show and he says, Hey Sal, can you do a quick video for the landing page? So when you go to the, whatever the page is, maybe Doug can tell us what the website is. If you go there, it's a landing page for the 50% off enrollment. So he's like, make a video. And I had on a shirt. <laughs> yeah. We'll post it up here. If you're watching this, it's a taco with an eggplant yeah. in it. So thankfully we, we, we have one certification that believes in us. Yeah, no. out there. And I'm like, yeah. Jason, you sure you don't want me to change? He's like, no, 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 it's all good. It's bro. all good. Yeah. And I, it's up there. <laughs> it is. It's on the landing page. I was just looking at it. I thought, Oh my God, this dude did. But I mean, I do remember you asked, you yeah. know, I, I clearly remember you saying, Hey, is this shirt? Okay. And he was like, yeah, yeah, it's good. Oh man. <laughs> I, just, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. We're real. You know, it's all yeah. good. Hey, speaking of, of, uh, I got to bring this up to Justin. I want to see what happened here. So, okay. So I got, uh, obviously I got kicked off Instagram, so I'm not there. So now every once in a while I go on the mind pump Instagram under mind pump Instagram, just to see what's going all on. Right. Yeah. We're all kind of logged in there reading comments and, you know, I'll answer some questions or whatever. And I, I don't do too much. So I don't want to get, uh, the mind pump page kicked off yeah, too. Please don't. But I go on the, I went on the, uh, what is it, the, the explore page, uh -huh. right, where they do suggestions. Yeah. And the explore page reflects your searches, right? 
So if you look up a lot of like booty pics, you can see booty pay. If you look up workouts, you can see sure. workout stuff, cars, cars. Guilty. And I'm on there and there's videos that are terrible. They're disgusting. They're the, the pimple popping, squeezing. Oh, the doctor your pimple popper. So gross. Now, I, I do want to say this. Ever since reason, we brought Cart Courtney on staff, bro. Dude, that's little, exactly little what it is. A little fishy to me, bro. <laughs> okay. Ever since you brought the wife on the team, dude. Yeah. Dude. And I know, I know she's on there. That's so, so Is funny. she looking up like pimple popping? So, gross? yeah. So you guys kind of brought this up. And like, I thought the same thing because honestly, like that stuff is like porn for her. Like, yeah. like I, I'm like, I get caught looking at stuff. She's always on there looking at like disgusting chimp, like, you know, popping of things and pulling things out of people. Mm. Oh, and, like, Jessica likes that packing. too. You ever seen packing where they like put like gauze into like these wounds yes. and like, yes. pull, I'm like, what is wrong with you? Oh. It's uh, like, I, you mentioned that off, you know, Aaron, like I was like talking to her, I'm like, honey, are you looking at this stuff? Cause they're on to you. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's like, no, you have to tell her. I'm like super, she's like, so prides herself in being professional. And so like, she's all sudden, denying it. She's like totally. She's just as bad it. as the yeah. guy who's denying the booty pics. Yeah. This whole explore yeah. page is all fucking bikini caught. pics. Right. Got, yeah. Just admit you got caught. Why do they always recommend these bikini pics yeah. to you, honey? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Huh? I, <laughs> Dude, I'm looking at like cars all day. Heads, I swear. You know, just like squeezing bro, out. Like, it is disgusting. It is evolutionary. It, that's what it is. Because when we were back, when we were, you know, primates or whatever, you know, you ever watch chimp, you know, chimp videos? That's what they do. They like squeeze each other's whatever yeah. and they groom each other. Yeah. Jessica doesn't say, if I have a black head or a hair to pull out or something weird like that, and I do it without Jessica doing it for me, yeah. she's legitimately angry with me for at least Dude, a couple minutes. I'm telling so you guys, gross. pimple porn. Like, you might oh. as well, like, have Ugh. the URL. She's shown me videos Ugh. and it's the, I can't, I can't even watch it. And she watches the whole thing and she's like, it's so gratifying. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? You know, speaking of porn, you see, uh, you see my girl posting uh, naked what? naked photos again. Oh, oh, Britney Spears. Yeah, that girl, yeah. not my wife. Girl, <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on, bro? Not, yeah. dude. Yeah, oh. he's, all, he's all proud. Hey, check yeah. this out. <laughs> Ever since she like you know got freed up, right? The whole free Britney thing. Yeah. Now she's really being free. It I was uh, it was on Instagram, and she was just naked on the beach. I guess I feel like I like her more. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, See, are you with me? I think so. She's I think you are like with me. Throwing it up, like, hey, you she's know, in a different. Now she's a, she, what category would she be in now? Milf or cougar? She's well, yeah, a she's, a, she's a she's a mom, and she's in her forties now, right? Yeah, she she's got to be right? Four, right or close to forty. Yeah, she Maybe didn't she's look, a little bit younger. She didn't look bad in the in the pictures, but she did go off a little bit ever since she got, like you said, she got what did what she do? She cut herself off from the contracts. That yeah, I think the judge finally gave her. They freed her. Yeah, yeah. She was under the you know the the daddy contract where dad had all. Full control over finances. Yeah, I don't know what you call it. And, and now they were saying there's a, there's a there's a term for it. Wasn't the re wasn't the reason they were saying that they were in, in control of her? Because she's a little crazy. Because she's a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then this happens. Now she's doing this shit. Oh, she's forty. Okay. Yeah. So she's yeah. Well, I mean, the oh, level of Christi fame she had. Oh, Christina Aguilera is a year older. I thought she was actually younger. You, it's funny you brought that up because that just reminded me of something I had on my notes to tell you guys. Do you know? Okay, so I've been pushing you guys oh. on the the whole Waze thing, the Waze app. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, because the the cops and everything. I told you, it's like tells you when there's a pop. Yeah. yeah. So I'm on there yesterday, and uh, I have an option for Christina Aguilera. What? So I click on it. So she talks to me now. What? Yes. Yeah, so on she, your Waze? App? Yeah. So she gives me my directions, and she said like when there's obstacles, like she'll say it'll say <laughs> things like uh, like uh, obstacles, something about like you know overcoming them, like how powerful and empowering it is. <laughs> so up. yeah, no, it's hella funny. So, yes, yes, it's very empowering. I've, uh, Shut she's, your face. Yeah, yes, so I like I just like. I like Justin's navigate. We drive home. We drove uh, home together uh, from. Well, from he has like one of the team. generic like Irish chicks. No, or not Irish. Like that, right? It's English. Oh, it's English. Yeah, yeah, yeah she yeah. sounds very you know yeah. like. This is nice. actually Christina Aguilar. Proper. So it was an option on the ways thing. Before we take on today, let's take a second to make sure we buckle up, okay? It asked if I wanted to have her do my directions. I'm like, How hell weird. yes. Does I she do. get like all diva at some stop signs? Like, well, so <laughs> I, I mean, I literally only drove today with it, and so far I saw the obstacles and the traffic, and it was you know very um, uplifting. Right, I was in oh. traffic, but I felt like, oh wow, we're gonna get through this. Oh, you're such a dude. Gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get through this, Adam. You're saying <laughs> everything's gonna be okay. Dang, I had such a transition here. I was gonna talk about cougars because of cougars. <laughs> uh, so, like, it was pretty funny story. So, at the school. Uh, it starts out not seeming funny because there was like a lockdown of the school. So they thought there was like a, a mountain threat. lion. Oh, like, like roaming through. Yeah, that's funny, Adam. It yeah. was a bomb threat. Well, well, either there's a mountain yeah, lion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> neither one of those are funny. Cool. Yeah. True. Yeah. So 
uh, a guest, like this is like that, that game, like telephone, right? So mm-hmm. you, 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 you know, tell the next person it gets distorted. And so this is kind of what happened. Like it was a big tall tale. Uh, it turns out that uh, they did some investigating. They were looking around after they shut the school down and it was just a big fat tabby cat. That what? someone thought was a that somebody outlier. Yeah, that like Bro, one kid it, said it was like maybe a, big a bob cat. cat. Another kid was like, "Oh, it's a big cat." And then it's a cougar. And then like, and then they shut the school down. And as they shut the school <laughs> down, like some kid was like still in the the bathroom, right? And everybody was gone. And like all of the the classrooms were locked. And he's like freaking out, like, yeah, over like a tabby cat. Dude. Oh my god, yeah. dude! You're, so have you guys seen now that everybody has uh, those surveillance cameras, like Ring and you know those alarm cameras? Yeah. People now are, because this is, I didn't realize this, but apparently there's a lot of neighborhoods, especially here in the Bay Area, where these mountain lions, mm-hmm. uh, they roam like neighborhoods yeah. in early morning. They've yeah. been in my backyard before. We see them on the Yeah, so camera. people will post pictures of like uh, of the of these mountain lions on their car or walking, you know, Dude, on their lawn. They like make crazy weird noises too at night. Like it sounds like a screaming person. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's super rare, right? That they do anything. Uh, yeah, no, they. It's super rare they'll attack unless it's like. Um, I mean, there's been examples of this. I think even on in Almaden on one of those trails where, um, you know, the, they grabbed like a kid and, and then the dad had to like wrestle what? him out. I swear to God, this happened. So, so I've seen one quicksilver. On, I've seen one on a trail before. Exactly. Yeah. That's the trail. Yeah. So I was on that trail and I turn a corner, and there was one just chilling, <clears throat> just looking at me. Yeah. And you know it's a freaking wild animal in right there, and mountain lions are legit. Like that thing could take well, you little out. dogs and like kids. You gotta really watch out for for sure. Hey, speaking of dads and rescuing, so that did you guys finally read the news on Cain Velasquez? Did you see that? No. Oh, oh, so God. he yeah. so he shot. I, this is what I heard. Right, he shot somebody that tried to molest his niece. Is that uh, what it was? Yeah, it's, I think it's his niece. Maybe Doug can look up. I mean, it's all it over. It said family member. I didn't know exactly which one. Wow. Yeah, I think it was niece. I think it was like a four-year-old niece. I think there should be a law that says if that person is found guilty of molesting your kid, that you are absolved of yeah, of all- Definitely reduced uh, sentence. Yeah, like you got to do community service. It's going to be interesting to see what they what they do. I, I mean, I think, what the, I think what happened was he went after him and the dude fled the scene and had somebody else with him and they took off in a car and Kane fired a gun at him and hit the, the and driver. He missed, right? Yeah, yeah, he hit. missed the guy and hit the driver. Oh, so he yeah. didn't actually kill the guy? No. Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah, and he hits oh, and he hits the other guy. Not, I don't think the other guy died. I think it's a, but I do think he's getting attempted murder on that on that guy right now. Wow. Yeah. So I, I hope he get. You know, I don't know. That's a tough one for me. Obviously, we don't want a bunch of vigilantes because people make mistakes, mm-hmm. uh, and you could accidentally hurt somebody that you know didn't do anything. But on the flip side, as a dad. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to not do something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't have a lot of kid. empathy. I feel for like everybody gets, should get like a a pass on something like that. There's like you get one, you get like one crazy pass of like some some bullshit happens like that. Where I mean, if this was like a, a recurring pattern in your life and you like take advantage and you you kill people just because <laughs> <laughs> just because yeah. you think you can or whatever, like that's probably where you're heading. Yeah. That that's that's not a good idea. We don't need a lot of those. But I mean, if something happened to a a, a niece of mine or a daughter or a son of mine, God help! I'd rather take I'll take my chances. That's with what the jury. I'm saying. I I don't know if I would be. I I think I would probably do something like that. Right? You no, know, yeah. just the, the how it would take over. Did I you think. find it, Doug? Yeah, I'm having some difficulty here, but it sounds like it was an underage relative. So he allegedly shot a, a man accused of molesting his relative earlier this week. Mm, yeah. So wow. there you go. That's what that's what happens. Yep. Hey, although I mean, shit, man, that guy's lucky to be he got shot because if Kane got his hands on him. Without well, he would have been a much worse. That's why he ran. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. big uh, ass. He's gonna stick around with King Velasquez, coming, Velasquez after coming after you. Yeah. Holy cow! Hey, did you guys hear about the trainer that forgot to move the decimal on his caffeine? Oh, oh I did. He died. Died, dude. What? But it was like it was like equipped with like 200 cups of coffee. Yeah. So Whoa. so if you so and this is one of the reasons why caffeine powders. Oh. There's been this push to make them illegal. Yeah, it's super dangerous because milligrams and grams is a big difference, right? Like 200, okay, so a serving of caffeine typical is two or 300 milligrams. Like a, a strong pre-workout will have like 300 milligrams of caffeine. That is, uh, that's that's not even, that's only one third of a gram of, of caffeine, right? So if somebody messes up 
and doesn't realize milligrams to grams and goes, oh, 300 grams. Well, now they just took 3,000 milligrams of caffeine and oh they're going to die. Oh, my God, dude. That's, that's, not the first time, that's not the first time that's happened. There was yeah. a, a kid, I believe, in the UK that did the same mm -hmm. thing where he took a scoop because caffeine powder can be very, very concentrated. Super concentrated. To where, you know, think about it this way. You know how much five grams of creatine is? Right. It's a tiny scoop, right? Yeah. That would be like 5,000 milligrams of caffeine in a similar size well, scoop. Well, didn't they try and make a... Because it was the same kind of a thing with the powdered alcohol. Like it, you can oh, buy yeah. it online and like, so they're trying to make that illegal because, you know, <laughs> powdered alcohol, can you imagine, uh, you know, some kids getting their hands on that and then pouring it in? I've never seen that before. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Powdered yeah. alcohol? They, they were trying to make, make it. Make it the they, ultimate jungle juice. It's like super concentrated. I think, they, I think they made it illegal because of that. I You'd seen it though? I'd never seen it before. It was an article I had read a while ago uh -oh. about, mm -hmm, about doing that. That's the thing. You got to be careful because- some things are extremely potent in milligram or microgram. There's even stuff that's micrograms. And if you don't know the difference, then you can really screw yourself because you look at Man. the you look at the back of the label and you go, Oh, I have two hundred, you know, grams all the time, not realizing that's two thousand, you know. So you milligrams. just had a heart attack and it was just Bro, caffeine, I tell you what, I'm gonna tell you right now. If caffeine was invented today, it would one hundred percent be Ill illegal. There's there would never it would they would not make it a legal product. There's no way in hell. And now we have it obviously in Kids drinks and you know everybody's drinking it. It's, that's how potent caffeine is and how potentially dangerous it is. Mm -hmm. Like you drink, think about it this way, right? You have uh, like a, a a rock star, three hundred milligrams of caffeine. If the average person drinks two of those at once, they'll have some severe uh, potential effects. Maybe yeah, you ain't slipping that night for sure. Maybe throwing up. They might have super nausea unless they have like super high tolerance. Drink three of those, and now you're getting close to maybe killing yourself just from just from rock stars. So if it was, like I said, if it was legal today or if it was invented today, it would definitely be, it would be a drug. It would be a street drug yeah, yeah. that you would buy from your, your, your drug Dang, dealer. I'd be signing up for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is my fix, dude. Since we're sharing, yeah, since just, we're sharing you, crazy stories. You'd be an addict for sure. <laughs> I read, I read a crazy coat. story and I don't remember what, what I was, what I was reading, but, uh, what article or whatever, but this, there was an article on the, uh, CEO, the original CEO of FedEx, Fred Smith. Have you heard the the story of when they were about to file bankruptcy and what happened? No. Okay, I didn't. I don't know how I didn't know this. So this is like in this the like mid seventies uh, when FedEx was first up and coming, and they were down to their last five thousand dollars and were going to have to file bankruptcy. The CEO Fred Smith goes uh, and lays it all on in blackjack. No way. Yes, he dude. quadruples his money, comes Get back, the and, hell out of and here. brings the company back. The most from life. irresponsible thing you could that possibly is, do. Never works, right? Dude. Like, he, ever. And it did work, dude. What? what a ter hey, what a terrible story because it's some, an awesome story. I know, to that. dude. Somebody's like, oh, dude, I can still do yeah, that. Someone's listening to that right now. And they're like, you know what? If I'm going to take my kids' uh, college savings and I'm going to just, we're going to get rich, honey. You know, just, you know that's like everybody initially thinks and then they go there and just get like obliterated. Dude, I told you guys about, there's only one time I've gone to Vegas with a legit high roller. So this person had a gambling website. This was years, this was a long, it was like maybe 15 years ago, back when gambling websites were kind of a, starting to grow or whatever. Anyway, this guy obviously had tons of money and he was friends with a friend of mine. So I didn't know this guy. And we went to the casino together and I'd never seen anything like this before, but he literally blew through $30,000 on the roulette table in 10 minutes, Ugh. 30 grand in 10. I saw him just put chips all over the table. Gone, gone, gone. Dude, it's this, it's really, it's like the speed for me, yes. you know, to lose like, a, like you didn't even sit there for a, very long and boom, it's gone. Yeah. Just like that. Like, I, might as well it's set not as fire. crazy as you think about it when you think about the, the, the amount of money that person's probably worth. Well, that's the thing that so blew got, me away. Yeah, that's what, the, the, like, yeah, that right. sounds crazy, like, to you sure, or I. Sure, but to him, that's like me losing 100 bucks. Exactly. Yeah, I, know. I mean, it's no, you definitely have seen people throw, hundred people that probably shouldn't throw 100 bucks on there, throw yeah. 100 bucks on there, and lose it all day long. So when you see somebody gambling 30,000, it seems like, oh my God, that's so uh, much yeah. money, but it's like, that's like gas money Yeah, for him, when I so. went to uh, Monte Carlo years ago, they have a casino crazy. there, and it's one of the, I mean, you know, that's like one of the richest places in the world. And you have to pay money to go in the casino. You have to pay a fee. So I did. I went in. You got to pay money to lose money. And I saw, and there were, all the tables had a 5,000 minimum euro bet. Minimum was 5,000 euro. Okay. This was bad. And this was a long time ago. This was like 20 years ago. And I saw people putting, and I would do the math kind of from a distance and kind of try to add it up. And it was like, nobody was betting less than 100,000 euro on each thing. 
That's the amount. So to these people who are billionaires, yeah. it's like peanuts. It's yeah. nothing. They yeah. just throw it around like whatever. Yeah, no, it's all it's all relative to your income. I remember yeah, getting into this with my my but one of my buddies who's like slots there, huh? super <laughs> conservative with his money was giving me shit about like my cars and stuff. And when you when you factor in, and he's like super like he's been driving the same car since two thousand five, and like he's like yeah. super tight on. I'm like when you do when you do the amount of money that we we each make and and what you drive and so what you just I made drive, feel real bad. About well, it, I mean, as you give him talking <laughs> shit, he was talking shit to me about being like irresponsible. I'm like, oh. what are you talking about? Like, we, based off our percentage of our income, it's true. You are spending more. You're spending more than I am. It's so it's just it's all relative. Well, it's to like him. this, right? Yeah. Trip off this, right? If you make a hundred grand a year, so six six figures, yeah. And you buy a ten thousand dollar car, which nobody does, by the way. So you shouldn't even use that as an example. Yeah, but let's just say you did, yeah. right? A hundred thousand dollars, you buy a ten thousand dollar car, which would be that's very responsible, I think. Buy a ten thousand dollar car. Oh, you're being responsible. Say yeah. that's not what most people do. No, most people make a hundred grand and buy a thirty thousand dollar car. Yeah, right? But let's say you buy a ten thousand dollar car and you make a. If you make a million dollars, that's like buying a hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah. That's the the same ratio, right? right. If buying a thirty thousand dollar car and making a hundred grand is like buying a three hundred thousand dollar car. Right. If you make a million dollars, so right. yeah, totally, totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So so. Trip off this, right? So this weekend, um, I went and donated blood um, at the, over at the Red Cross. So there's a shortage, right? There's a blood shortage right now. And uh, mm. my wife, she does this. Uh, she's now done this a couple times. She's, it's a good deed to do. Yeah, so. she brings it up. You know, you should go donate. You should go donate. And um, so, and I have type O, which is, uh, you know, the universal one, right? Type O negative? I don't, I don't know. I'm going to find out, but it's I know cool it's band. O. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I did. I scheduled it and I went. And of course, you know, because I did. They'll I, still take it with all the STDs and everything too? Yeah. Doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, they, doesn't, they will only give I my mean, blood. They screen it out. <laughs> oh, other, oh, STD. other STD AP. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, they cancel each other out at this point. <laughs> yes. But anyway, so um, so I'm over there and I'm, you know, waiting. And, and I, of course, I get on my phone. I look up, you know, side effects and effects and of, of, uh, of donating blood. And I didn't know this, so trip off this. For men, there are legit, like significant health benefits to donating blood. Okay, so I know bodybuilders that used to do this all the time. Yes. Okay, now bodybuilders may do it for a different reason because when you're on anabolics, mm -hmm. your red blood cells go through the roof. Yeah, that's why. And they do. donating blood helps keep you. Yeah, that's why they would do it. So this is up. different reasons. All men. So uh, across the board, men who donate blood once a year uh, will reduce their heart attack risk by something like 88%. What? So what's why? What's the law? They reduce their cancer risk uh, significantly as well, and their and issues with the liver significantly. So what's the, what's the cause? Right, men don't bleed you know monthly like women do. So our iron levels tend to build over time, and getting you know flushing it out. Yes, interesting. It, too high of iron is is toxic to the body. Huh. It can cause issues with the heart. It can cause issues with the liver. It can it can increase your risk of cancer. So when you look up the studies on men who donate blood regularly, once a year, there's significant health benefits from doing so. Pretty, pretty crazy, right? Now, here's the crazy thing. Weird about to it. me that they don't sell that. Like they don't sell that idea to people. I know. Like, I would, you would totally think, sell that. Right. Yeah. You know, because now you get all the people who just want to get healthier would donate their blood. Right, right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Now, there are also psychological benefits. I looked this up as well. Now, this makes sense too. There's lots of psychological benefits because you feel like you're helping people and you're doing something good for other people. So that's all. But I, I kind of figured that. The, physio the physiological benefits, though, blew me away. So here's what's trippy about this. How many times have we learned about an ancient or old practice that we've made fun of have uh, some truth oh, to it? Oh, bloodletting, right? Yeah, or like with uh, leeches and all that. Yeah. Dude, like, like th they did this during medieval times all the time. Now, the, yeah. the thought was... Like any kind of ailment or whatever, yeah. like let's just you know have you lose some blood. Yeah, because yeah. they, <laughs> okay. they thought, yeah, they thought you you would get rid of the whatever was in you. Yeah, or the, the blood demons. But let's what's weird is that there's some there's like this small benefit to it. And how many times have we found that? So like yeah. another one would be like, um, you know, you ever seen the masks that uh, the black uh, plague doctors would wear? Yeah, plague doctor the mask, long, the long the one, the super yeah, long, yeah. and then when they would use the long beak to, and they would pack it full of herbs and flowers and stuff because they thought the smell would prevent them from catching whatever disease. But right. in reality, what it is it kept them far away from their patients. So they have this uh, long beak and they wouldn't get very close to the patients and that probably prevented some infection. Yeah, I thought it was to not smell like dead people. That's that's yeah. why they said, right? Because they don't understand. To not smell benefit. dead people? Yeah, because yeah, they're around dead people everywhere, dude. Well, they thought that the Black smell, pig? and that's another thing. They thought that the smell is what brought the illness. Now, how close they were to viruses and bacteria in the air, right? Uh -huh. How close they were without uh -huh. even realizing it. 
that kind of stuff trips me out. It is cool. Like crazy. Yeah, I was I was anticipating you going the evolutionary route of like like men should, you know, always have like a gash wound or something, you know, from <laughs> yeah. from fighting. You know, like we all, we should be losing more blood. Well, he's talked about that before, the the whole scar thing before, yeah. right? Like the the women will find a man with a scar on his face more attractive Isn't than that. Isn't that funny? Yeah. It's so not true for women either. That's sad. That's sad, right? <laughs> yeah. But if you take a guy no. who's handsome, right, or considered handsome, and then you put a scar on his face, they've done studies like that. Women will find him more attractive. Yeah, isn't that? Did hilarious? you get to listen to that Jordan He's Peterson interview tough. yet, or no? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Okay. Why is he talking about? No, that? never. No, no. It's, it's something else that would have been nice to talk about right there if you actually listened oh, so to it. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> but you never fails, bro. So we're just can we, can we, maybe we can get Jessica on the show, Doug. Maybe, maybe have Jessica on Dang. here since she fucking reads or listens to all the stuff I send his way, so we can discuss <laughs> it and talk about it. Shut your face. <laughs> Why don't you bring it up? What's well, because it, I mean, if you can't have a discussion around it, like I, you, I need you to have seen it or one of you to have seen it, so we can kind of have dialogue around whether we agree or disagree and he was talking about the he, primarily with like women and what they're attracted to oh. and how they date either lateral and up right oh, they, I've heard we, you talk about that women never n women never date like well not never but like or more likely will date lateral and up and they won't and which is what makes in terms of like income or intelligence, intelligence yeah. all that right so mm -hmm. as they become more intelligent and more financially successful the the pull shrinks for them and the opposite is true with men i know as men get more intelligent and more financially successful the pull opens up for them and for women it shrinks down I thought. yeah i remember training some very successful female um, entrepreneurs, business owners, surgeons, and they would tell me that mm -hmm. it was difficult for them to find like to, a person to date because obviously if you're a female surgeon, yeah. to them- not, not a lot of guys ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to them, it was like, the, you're right. That, and they wouldn't necessarily say it that way, yeah. but that's yeah. kind of what was happening. And it, I used to watch these shows at Millionaire Matchmaker mm -hmm. or whatever, and it was like a common thing, especially it was a lot harder for- you know, busy, successful women to find the match. Yes, and by the way, okay, so so I've heard people blame this on insecure men, and I'm sure that's part of it. Like a guy may feel insecure dating sure. a woman that out earns him, you know, that maybe is perceived to be more intelligent. So that, I could see that. But there's another side to it that's also true, which is that w women don't like, and this is just statistics, typically don't like to date men that make less than them. They, per they themselves don't like to date men who are lower on the financial uh, wrong than they are. So it goes both ways. But mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's, it's a, it's an interesting thing, right? It's very interesting, but it's a, yeah. Do I, I you not, do you not believe that we're kind of, you know, born with some of this? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like the, the, the idea of providing for my wife and child, I don't feel like it was something that definitely was something that was taught to me. It was something that I, it's just, it, I've felt it inside me for as long as I could, could imagine. Yeah. Like that was, that's always been in the, in the back of my mind. Even what's kept me well, from marrying argument. and having a yeah. child uh, at an earlier age was I wanted to get myself as prepared as I possibly could before I took on that responsibility. That was very important to me. And it wasn't like someone taught me that or told me that. Yeah. It was just something I felt inside. That was the, that's the, the evolutionary argument supports that, right? That, uh, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, uh, most of the time that we are on earth, it, the the male was the provider would hunt and the protector and the nurturer and the one that took care of the the offspring was the uh, was the the female and that was just the way it worked um, also why women tend this is the again what the evolutionary argument why they tend to prefer more mature men because it meant that they probably had access to more resources they probably and the same thing with scar right remember we talked about the scar on the face yeah He's probably kicked some ass and survived. Yeah. He's probably not afraid right. to, you know, to get in a scuffle to protect or to whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's not true in the other direction. Now I, now, I think that obviously as we evolve and continue to evolve, we can move past some of the stuff or try to or acknowledge it. Yeah. But I also think denying some of those those roots that we have is silly. I think we need to acknowledge them. And then if we want to move past them and, and change certain things, I think um, that's totally fine. But I think denying them, like they don't exist, is also kind of silly because yeah. the data shows well, I mean, that. people are comfortable with different roles these days, especially. But yeah, I mean, it did, you know, come from somewhere. It's not like, you know, we just like made this stuff up. Yeah. Like, I, I felt that way, yeah. the same that you're describing. Hey, yeah. I wanted to bring up a, a, a supplement uh, from Live On that I noticed a very interesting effect. Okay, so at the moment, we're, we're testing out a continual glucose monitor. I'm not going to talk specifically about the company yet because we still are working things out with them. But nonetheless, what it does is it measures your 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 sugar levels, right? Your blood sugar levels, your blood glucose. And so what's cool about this is you can eat food 
You can see how the food affects your glucose. You can see how your sleep affects your glucose or lack of sleep or stress or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all real time. So it's really, really cool. Well, anyway, Live On has their liposomal supplements. So, and I talk about their glutathione. I've talked about some of their other stuff, but they also have something called alpha lipoic acid. And alpha lipoic acid increases insulin sensitivity and helps bring glucose down in the, in the blood. And it's been used to help increase creatine absorption. So this is for a long time now, we've known that alpha lipoic acid will increase creatine absorption because it increases sensitivity with insulin and all that stuff. Anyway, taking the alpha lipoic acid before I ate a carb heavy or starch heavy meal resulted in a lower oh, wow. response. And I've tested, I tested it like five different times. No. So what, okay. What is your, what's, so for me, like, uh, I, I, I hover around the 130, 140 as my peak when mm -hmm. I, after I eat. Yeah. And then I think I, I come back down to, I want to say 80 range. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah 60 yeah. to 80 range, I think is. And I kind of stay. You're like below hundred when you're mm -hmm. fasted and then it goes up as high as I can. Yeah. It's high. Hundred. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really the, the highest I hit is 140. I've even tested it with some, although I did go over, I had, um, the Costco cinnamon rolls. Bro, have <laughs> you had those? No, are they good? <laughs> Bro, I cannot believe someone didn't tell me about these. Why? You've been saying that and I'm like, I, I don't. You know, bring them. Uh, they were destroy. introduced to me. Just, were they just in the package, or do they have like a baker or anything? No, just like you, you just toss them in the oven for a few minutes to heat them up, and they're ready to go. And they you said are, they're better than cinnamon. They, I do think they're better than cinnamon. That's how good they are. I just got introduced to them literally like two weeks ago. I had them over at my buddy's house. They they served them, and I thought, oh my god, who made these cinnamon rolls? I'm like, <laughs> and they're like, that's Costco. I'm like, get out of here. And I thought maybe it was like a, just an anomaly, like maybe there's something special that she did or something like that. So I had Katrina pick them up the other day, and holy shit, they're uh, like this dangerous. Like, wait, so when you eat it, is your is your yeah, yeah so that was something the roof? Yeah, hey, we're turning I mean, it could have something to do with eating like three of them. That might have something to do with it. So, but <laughs> well, yeah, that was so I well, I've been ever since ever since we got these things, I've been like kind of testing like different foods. I mean, it was interesting. One night, I decided to smash ten tacos, and I was cool. Like, didn't even spike me over one forty. Kept under. Yeah like 130 something range. Um, but then literally, and it wasn't, I was joking about having three cinnamon rolls. I, I had not even a full, full one of these things and it shot me over that. Have you played with combining fats with your sugars and trying to see if different things change? So I, I typically eat that way. So I haven't like isolated uh, mm -hmm. other than the case where I had a cinnamon roll just by itself. Right. Dude, I had three blow pops and my shit went up to 180. <laughs> Blow pops? Yeah, well, yeah, you brought them. What are you acting all surprised? No, I mean for? they're only like forty calories. <laughs> it's pure. Candy. I know, but it's only forty calories. Yeah, but you guys see how I eat them. I don't. I don't lick them for an hour and a half like you do. I I eat all three of them. You remember, one, the, the, remember the remember the owl two, commercial? One, two, yeah, yeah, three, yeah. three, yeah. three no, licks to get to go, the center of a lot. I went in the back and I forgot. Remember when Adam brought them? Were they were Halloween? What were they from? Your Katrina bu Katrina bought them for my fortieth birthday, and I remember when she bought them. I'm like, what the fuck's up with the lollipops? Yeah. Right. <laughs> And I think it was because she, you know, and in her defense, I think I made a comment like, man, you know, I was like, I wanted a lollipop, like literally like, I don't know, a year, it was a year ago now, right? Like a year ago, I brought, brought up like, I haven't had a lollipop in like a decade or two, right? <laughs> so for my birthday, she decides to like, I'm like, I just wanted town. one, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Not a hundred. <laughs> so we had like a lollipop station at my, my birthday party. Yeah, so party. you bring a shoe box yeah, so of blow she, pops. She dumped them on you guys. So I went back there. This was like day three of wearing the- Well, the, you, eat, you eat them like Tic Tacs. You're not supposed to that's eat them like that. That's what I did. I crunched like three or four of them, dude. And I and went- <laughs> But still though, that's interesting. That's still only, you're only talking about a hundred and something calories. No, it's all sugar. But I yeah. think each one's like 15 grams of sugar. So I had three. So that's 45 grams of sugar all one shot. Okay, still not crazy. Like a really? soda. That's yeah, a, I, I barely ever. That's drink equivalent soda. to you having a soda or something. So like my that. so here's the deal with mine. Mine can go mine spikes higher than yours, but yeah. it comes down really, really well. The alpha lipoic acid blunted it, which was like I said, I tested it five different to five different times. Yeah. I would do the alpha lipoic acid. Then I would have a meal that I had before. Yeah. So I knew what my numbers would be. Yeah. And it's like a 20 to 30 point lower drop. Because so I'll eat the I'll take the alpha lipoic acid about ten minutes, fifteen minutes before, then eat the meal, and I get a lower glucose response. Really interesting, right? Yeah, so interesting. I could see benefit from taking alpha lipoic acid. So let's say you're an athlete and you just worked out hard and you want to get your glycogen. Okay, so this is like the muscle energy. You want to get it replenished as fast as possible because you're going to have another workout a little bit later, or you have a break and you want to you know maybe an hour break and you're going to go back and go after it again and you want to get as much glycogen as possible, alpha-lipoic acid with your meal. 
that theoretically should make that happen, you know, way faster. Well, I'll play with it now because I've, I've been really, I've been really consistent with mine. So I've been really consistent and I've been playing around with different foods. I do find it really interesting. What I, you know, I know we're not doing a commercial for them right now, but I do think it's really cool how they have like a nutritionist that's connected to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she's blown me up more times than I can respond. Yeah. She, anytime she notices something different on mine, she'll, yep. Yep. she'll, she, she'll message so me. So I was monitoring also. She, you know, I had a pazuki the other night. I was like, dude, Wait, calm down. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> Like a whole one by yourself? What is not it? The, I shared it. I'm not like a gluttonous pig over so here. So what did the glucose monitor do? <laughs> oh, it's like 150. I hadn't got up that high at all. Like I, again, like you, I go like 130s, yeah. kind of the highest I'll go. So I noticed, so you guys so know- So you're I'm, the worst. That's weird. Yeah. No, that's not because uh, you guys know that I'm messing with the uh, ibutamorin, mm. the peptide that raises growth mm. hormone. Megs. So yeah. stupid. <laughs> so, uh, would you? Hey, first of all, what do you think would happen? We get connected with a TRT clinic that also prescribes. Yeah. I knew exactly what was going to happen. Like, I'm gonna have a good time, right? Yeah. I'm gonna try everything. So far, I'm trying the NAD plus. We're just glad injections. you're better at math than that guy with the caffeine. Yeah, okay, right? we're just glad. Yeah, that's, that's right. I, yeah. I'm, now, I, I'm messing with the ibutamorin, which legit, Rest in peace. which legit, by the way. For me, works. It's like a I'm, I'm gaining size on it, which is kind of interesting, and I get better sleep. I notice the skin, all that stuff. But when you raise growth hormone, you will desensitize yourself a little bit to insulin. So it's not you. You should, definitely shouldn't take something that raises your growth hormone if you have issues with glucose and insulin. But if you're healthy, you're you're, you're going to be okay. Now I know you and the doctors are supposed to be meeting today and putting together a couple different uh, packages or stacks for depending peptides. on what peptides for yeah. what your goals are. Any idea of when you expect that to be live for the audience to check out? I, I think after I meet with them, we should be able to have it live. Oh, so hopefully maybe this week or I'm two? I'm hoping, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah, that's nice. nice. So, yeah, it'll be cool because uh, it gives options to people who don't need uh, hormone therapy but want to go to the next level. And I say next level because these are prescriptions. So obviously I don't, I think if you're unhealthy and you have a bad diet and you don't work out, like there, you have no, there should be no reason why you're going to work with peptides. But if you're, you got everything dialed in, you're one of those people that really likes to push it to the next level, see what can happen. You want to get monitored then peptides are very fascinating, very interesting for what they could do. So we're going to put together. I, I love Dr. Todd and Rand. They've been, in, it's been really nice. So for me, my Super whole life, valuable. my whole life that I've messed with steroids, I've done it all myself. And, you know, right now I'm going through a situation where this is where it's so nice to have them because we're trying to figure out uh, the right amount of Arimidex for me to run because oh. my estrogen levels, I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive to testosterone. I'm very sensitive to anything. Just generally that, sensitive. Yeah. Hold on. Don't cry right now. Don't cry. <laughs> I am, right? Just, so I, I gushing. My, my body really responds quick to anything that we take. And, uh, you know, I thought I had it all dialed in because I felt really good. But then when we did my blood work on, at the three month mark, uh, my estrogen levels were too low. Too low. Yeah. And did you have the, some stiffness? I did. So that was kind of what, it was funny because we had our meeting before my blood work came and I was like, he's asking how I was doing. I'm like, man, I feel great. I said, the only thing I do notice is I've got some stiffness in the joints way more than I, I used to. And I'm not really going hard or heavy. So that feels weird to me. And, I'm, and I know I could be better about my mobility, but it's still a lot worse than I would expect it. And he goes, hmm, well, we'll see when you get your blood work. Well, sure enough. He goes, well, one of the side effects is low estrogen levels will cause that. So then he had me completely stop the Arimidex for a couple of weeks. But then then my, then my I started to battle my gynecomastia. That, came, yeah. that started to come back. So then I went back to that dose. And I just like literally today am I starting to feel back to normal but I also want to be able to pull back on the- Yeah, end. I think messing with your hormones without <clears throat> getting regular blood work to find the ideal- like Oh man, this, was me, this, this was me guessing as a, as a, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I wouldn't say I'm like well read, but I'm pretty red yeah. when it comes to that. Like I, I've been- Yeah, you weren't a kamikaze person by any stretch. No, 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 no. And I had the anabolic Bible and I, you know, did my fair share of all the, the forums and stuff like that, reading up on stuff and kind of figured out what I thought was the best dose for me. But really I was, you know- Trial guessing. and error. Yeah. yeah, guessing a whole lot where it's nice to have somebody who's like checking, overseeing. Yeah, because what, what really. happens is if you're basing it off of symptoms, you're already behind the eight ball. Right. Because by that point, estrogen now has been too high or too low for however many weeks, and now you're feeling the symptoms, and now you got to play catch up. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus you go get blood work. This is what I love, right? I'll go get blood work regularly. Then they'll come back and say, let's try this, let's try that, you know, or everything looks good. 
Um, and I appreciate that versus, you know, again, you're in the dark, you have no idea what's going on. And that's when you start to, you know, run into, you know, some issues. Yeah. Like the, the, again, the Ibutum Warren is really interesting. It also is making me hungry, which is really, which is, which I'm trying to cut <laughs> simultaneously. Oh dude, I'm on day, I'm on day four and, of my cut and I've gained two pounds. So I need to figure out what's going on. Dude, you're the most hulkish I've ever seen. Yeah. It. yeah. My appetite's yeah. really Big high. Boy. I got yeah. my metabolism going up real high uh, through this process. So now my appetite's through the roof. Ibutamorin is a ghrelin mim mimic. This is why it makes uh, your growth hormone go up. But ghrelin also makes you hungry, right? Because it's telling your body you have no food. So we'll see what happens. But my appetite is just, it's its really high. But I'm trying to bring it down because right. I told you guys, I'm snoring. It's, that's not good, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm not going to wear the, the 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 I'll never have sex again mask yes. at night. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do so that. It's so fucked up. Hell, if you yeah. want to use that. Too. I know. I'm sorry. If you, you got to <laughs> yeah. wear that, but I don't want to wear a, a big ass. You know, no, you face. can control it. And I've been in the same boat as you too. Like I mean, when you I start can to still have sex, so you can get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, don't give a fuck. Vader mask and all. And all. Yeah. <laughs> that's because you already wear a Vader mask when you try and it's get fine. something. Dude. <laughs> As long as your wife's like, in the Star no, Wars. No problem. No problem here. Yeah. It just pa he just paints it black. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like, yeah, dude. Looks like Vader. Choke you out. Hey, real quick. You got to check this out. Now, we work with a company called Luna. They provide quality physical therapy to your home, and you don't need to go through your general practitioner. Your insurance covers it. All you got to do is go on their website and ask for help. So physical therapy can help you with injuries, can help you with mobility, I love uh, postpartum physical therapy. I think this is very, very important. Also, if you're a physical therapist and you want to moonlight a little bit and build a little extra business, you can work with them. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. It's not more expensive than regular physical therapy. It's the same price. Again, insurance covers it. Very easy to do. And they come to your house. You don't have to go to a clinic. So if you're interested, head over to MP, excuse me, mindpumppartners.com and click on Luna to check them out. And that's both for people who want to get a physical therapist and for physical therapists who want to work with this company. One more time, it's mindpumppartners.com, Luna. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from AK57. What is the best hamstring exercise to do in a garage gym that has no cable machines? Yeah, I, I used to think that you needed a, a leg curl machine to work the hamstrings. Um, now, of course, that does work the hamstrings, but leg curls are not the best exercise for hamstrings, not even by a long shot. It's all of the, you know, hip extension movements, right? Yeah. Your Romanian deadlifts. RDLs, and, all yeah, day. all day long. Stiff-legged deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts. You're going to get such better results with that. And you, you, all you need is free weights to do that. Now, as far as working the leg bicep, the part that curls the leg, a physio ball does that quite effectively. So you, now you don't combo need, the two together and bingo. You, you've hit the whole thing and there's really no need for That's all you would additional need. equipment. Yep. All you would need is a stability ball and or dumbbells or barbell. That's it. Like yeah. either one of those and either one of those are work. And then you have your your RDLs with the physio mm -hmm. ball and you're set. Now I love you've told this story before, Adam, but I love this as an as a you know, kind of proof and evidence of the effectiveness of just deadlifts and Romanian deadlifts for developing hamstrings. You had said a while ago how you had avoided leg curls because you were trying to get better at deadlifts and went back to do hamstring curls and were stronger than you were before. Yeah, blew my mind. Yeah. All from deadlifting. Yes, yes. And I, I mean, I spent years on the, I mean, lying leg curls were like my staple hamstring move and I wasn't a big deadlifter at all. And when I was trying to get, it was all back when we all first got together and I was chasing you, uh, your numbers on the deadlift. And I remember I had pretty much dropped all the, you know, machine exercises that I was doing just to get good at the deadlift. And I was, I don't know, a year and a half later or whatever, I decided to return to this machine, which by the way, I spent my whole life consistently doing and like was stuck around this, you know, I don't know, I was doing a hundred and something pounds. I think I got up to not very much, uh, on that machine and was instantly stronger than mm. I had ever been. And I hadn't done it in over a year. It blew my mind. Yeah. Now, mm. to, in regards to the physio ball leg curl, like here's something that I really like about it. So when you do leg curls on a machine, here's something I used to do with clients. In order to get them to feel it more in the hamstrings, so when you're doing a laying leg curl, right, your your thighs are on the on the pad, I would tell them to try to lift their thighs off the pad while curling their, their heels back because they would feel more of a squeeze on the hamstrings. And that's because that hip extension engages the hamstrings a little more. Mm. When you do a physio ball leg curl, that's natural, right? Because you're automatically lifting your hips and curling the legs back. 
So I think that they're even better than a machine leg curl yeah. because of the isolate that really the feel the hamstring one. too that you really have to work through to keep everything under control. Yeah. Did we mention good mornings in there as oh, well yeah. for hip hinging? Yeah. But yeah, that would just be another one that I you yeah. know would add into. And this. then if there, if resistance is an issue with physio ball leg curls, which it shouldn't, because <laughs> you can really go to one leg, go to one leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck. Or here's something that's that's really interesting: do a two leg uh, physio ball leg curl, then bring it back with one leg, so you get that that heavy negative, then bring it back with two legs yeah. and bring it back with the other leg. Good or, times. Or you superset physio ball leg curls with your Romanian deadlifts, which is what I would do when I was really trying to make, you know, do kind of hamstring focused uh, workout. But yeah, you, of all the muscles that would benefit from using machines, um, it's really the hamstrings aren't one of them. You, you don't need machines at all to no. develop incredible hamstrings. Next question is from Miriam M.A. What do you think about the creatine loading phase. Yeah. You know, I, I go, I went back and forth with this for a while. So when creatine first hit the market in the nineties, they suggested that you for a week take 20 grams a day. Yeah. And then after that, take what's called a maintenance phase of five grams a day. And the, the theory was that you saturate your, your creatine stores. And then all you need is five grams a day to maintain it, to maintain that. And then I, you know, I went back and forth. So I did that. And then I, and then I, because yeah, you're probably thinking it's a bit of a hustle, like a marketing hustle to yes. get you through the actual amount of creatine, right? Yeah. So you're just taking a ton of it all at once. And then I went uh, kind of back on the other end. I said, well, studies actually show that you'll get creatine stores up just fine by taking five grams a day. But then I read more studies to show that- Faster that, though. That right? is true, but you get them up there faster. Yeah. So if you're starting creatine- and you want to get those maximum creatine stores up faster, then loading, I guess, has some benefit. But, I mean, how much faster does it get it up? A week or two yeah. faster? I mean, I, I've i trained myself since I was a kid to do the loading phase. So mm -hmm. if I've been off of creatine for a while, I just – and I don't go like where I'm tripling or even doubling. I just do a heavy scoop for that first yeah. week or so. I just real generous when yeah, I'm same. scooping the creatine. Yeah. In. That's kind of what I do. Now, here's what's interesting too about, about creatine is, so five grams a day is like the standard dose for most people to take. For the brain boosting or cognitive boosting effects, uh, I had this conversation with uh, Mike Matthews. We had him on the podcast and he brought this up and I talked to him about it afterwards. More creatine might be beneficial for the cognitive effects. So like oh, really? more like 10 grams okay. a day. So I've been experimenting with that. I haven't noticed anything just yet. So it's two scoops instead of one. How's that feel? How's that sit in your stomach? No problem. I have no issues with, with creatine. Do okay. you find any issues with uh, it? Just a, a certain amount. Well, yeah, I'll feel it a bit in the stomach. So mm -hmm. yeah. I it's think never bothered me individual. either. I've heard some people like that too. Yeah. there's there's uh, and then some Isn't that where the, the pitch on the other other types of yeah. creatines uh, came too was because it does upset some people's stomach. And so then they have different yeah, delivery systems. Different delivery. Now I've, uh, I've gotten around that with clients. So I would say out of 10 clients, maybe one might be like, Oh, I get a little upset stomach. I just have them divide the dose. So instead of doing five grams at once, right, spread it out. Yeah. I'll have them do like three smaller that's servings. What I, that's what I did. And the, or do it with food and they notice, uh, they don't notice any, any issues. The other things you could do is take creatine with sodium, uh, or alpha lipoic acid, which we talked about earlier which increases absorption. So if you're trying to get those creatine stores to move up faster, then combining it with sodium or carbohydrates or alpha, uh, alpha lipoic acid should also kind of do the trick. Next question is from James Ayers 95. What are your thoughts on maintaining strength during a cut? Ooh. That'd be awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, no, <laughs> that's a be, tough one. That'd be awesome, awesome if you can do it. You now, know. Adam, you're the only one that that really did this in the extreme because you competed. Yeah. How big of a difference? Forget the two weeks right before a contest because there's no way in hell you keep any strength. Yeah, yeah. In the death weeks, but let's just say pre-contest versus you know kind of off season. How much of a difference would you see in strength? You lose quite a bit. Yeah. You do because you're in a deficit for so long consistently. You know, like uh, when I'm, I mean, when you're cutting for the show, like if, I'm not, in, I'm not talking about, um, you know, pre-cut, like the, the cut for the show is going to be anywhere from six to 12 weeks, depending on how, where your body fat percentage is. And pretty much after the first week of consistently being in a deficit, um, I would notice, you know, my strength, amount, which is also why, and we've talked about this on the show before, um, why I, why I don't like to be trying to lift trying to lift too heavy while I'm also cutting it messes with your head. Yeah. It? So it just, it would mess with me psychologically. If all of a sudden I'm running like a five by five routine, I'm three weeks into my prep uh, and I'm getting weaker every week. That can yeah. be really discouraging. And since my focus isn't about how strong I am getting on the show, it's all about the way I look. 
I prefer to do, you know, more hypertrophy type yeah. of training, supersets, giant sets. Because you got to go lighter anyway. It's right. Better psychologically. It I, is. I found the same thing. I'll much rather like do some bodybuilder style hypertrophy training just because then I'm not like fixated on those same numbers, those same lifts, you know, beforehand It'd be a little bit depressing. Yeah. Now, that being said, there there is value to lifting heavy in a cut. I actually talked about this on my in my story the other day or on my live I did. Um, cause somebody asked like, well, why would you even, would you ever want to lift heavy on that? Well, if you're sending a signal to the body to build muscle, even though you're in a caloric deficit and you're probably not going to build a lot, the, the likelihood of you holding on to more muscle, I would think is higher. Totally. So, so I think there is an advantage to lifting heavy as if you were trying to build or trying to go heavy, even though your body's probably not going to allow you to be hitting PRs when you're in two, three weeks of a deficit. Totally. hundred percent. Now, of course there's, uh, there are places where you will get stronger when you cut. Body weight exercises, but that's mainly because you're lighter, right? So uh, you'll find yourself weight ratio. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'll find yourself with your strength to weight ratio get better. This is why performance sometimes goes up when strength goes down. So if let's say you're an athlete that uh, you know agility is very important in your sport, and you notice your strength goes down a little bit in the gym, but you lost also lots of body fat, you may find that your agility improves because although you're not as strong with maximal strength your strength to weight ratio is better now. So in some cases, you'll see better performance. There's another scenario where you can actually get stronger in your lifts during a cut. And that's when you introduce like a new movement. That's a good point. So this yeah. is another thing that I like to do. So if I not only do I like to transition into more of like a hypertrophy type of training uh, block heading into my cut, I would also like to introduce like something I hadn't done in forever. Like when Justin got us on the windmill kick for a while, I was on a Turkish get up kick for a while. Like what a great time to introduce like a movement you never do when you're also in this caloric deficit because the just the just the skill acquisition over the course of the next three to four weeks, I'll improve on that. And a lot of times I can go up in weight. So totally. I might have started the Turkish get up and I can only do like a 40 pound kettlebell or mm -hmm. something. And even though I'm I'm weaker because I'm calorie deprived, I get better at that lift and I actually get to see that go up, which can be very encouraging. Well, isn't it just in general in terms of like, you know, the most like uh, advantageous sort of strategy towards this is to shift into something that's a new stimulus totally. right? to be able to preserve as much muscle and get it uh, activated as much as possible. Yeah, totally. Um, by, by the way, uh, beginners will see strength go up on a cut quite often. So what we're talking about are people who have some experience training. Yes. When I would get a new client, and you know we're, we're starting to get them to get leaner and we're seeing the scale move down, they would simultaneously always, almost always, especially when they're new, gain strength and even gain muscle. So we'd see you know, seven, eight pound fat loss, f three, four pound muscle gain. Now, if you're at the point where you're more advanced and you're already maximizing everything you're doing, you're in a bulk and you're pushing muscle size and you're trying to build more muscle and then you go on a cut and you've been doing this for a while, you're going to lose some strength. I mean, that's just the that's well. The, the newbie claim line. that you're talking about that that's the evidence of why you should add a movement that you you never do yeah. because it's mm -hmm. like you're getting those kind of newbie gains. If you've never done a Turkish get up and you're doing it for the first time, in a sense, you are a newbie for that movement, and so you can reap some of those like newbie type of yep. benefits of oh wow, even though I'm in a cut, I'm getting stronger in this lift, and I just I think it's a it's a psychological game that yep, you're playing. Yeah. It's not like there's no like re real reason why, oh, you should definitely do it this way or it's the yeah. best way. It's like there's lots of different ways you can do this. Now, I found in years of cutting and, and being in this game is that this helps me psychologically. Yeah, I would say so. Here's Here would be the tips, right? Uh, choose new <laughs> stimulus or new exercise. Keep protein intake high. Don't do too aggressive of a cut. The larger the deficit, the more likely you're going to experience uh, strength loss. Decrease, yeah. Supplement with things like creatine. Creatine is calorie free, but will boost uh, your strength. I think those are your best kind of your best tips. If you do that, then you'll minimize some of that. But again, if you're advanced and you're cutting, especially once you start to get really lean, you have to accept that you're going to lose some strength. Just accept it because if you're so fixated on I can't lose any strength. Uh, but I'm trying to get lean. Like it's now, gonna be hard to do, do both. How do you feel about like supplementing, uh, you know, with salt and uh, getting electrolytes? Oh. You know, with just in terms of like performance, if you're you are experiencing a, a D 
decrease in strength, but you know, now like introducing, that's also when I would run creatine. Yeah. So yeah. I used to actually not run creatine in a bulk, even though there's tremendous benefits to doing that. But again, you for would the, save it for the, cut. I would save yeah. it for the cut. So it was just giving me that little bit of an edge while I'm lifting. So the, the drop off of strength that's wasn't not a so, bad, that's so not a bad dramatic. Trip. It also would hold water in my muscle belly so I wouldn't be as flat. So that was the other thing that I used to hate about being – when you're in a consistent caloric deficit, you you never seem to fill the muscle bellies all the mm. way up. So you your never shirt get your, doesn't feel the same. Yeah, you don't get that full – that really full look that you're that you're chasing all the time and because you're in a, in a consistent caloric deficit. So I used to love to supplement with creatine at that time. I'd load the water up by crazy. I'd load the salt up. And so I would kind of, again, create this illusion. It was all psychological. Yeah, and here's the other thing with the sodium. Let's say your your cut consists of dropping your carbs. A lot of people like to drop carbs when they go on a cut because it's easier for them to maybe maintain their you know a lower appetite or whatever. When you do that, your body naturally loses water. You're going to need more sodium okay? Mm -hmm. because you will feel like crap. A lot of times that keto flu that people go through is actually the fact that they need more sodium. Or you do a cut, you're avoiding heavily processed foods, you're eating a lot of whole natural foods. Well, now your sodium intake is low, especially if you yeah. sweat and you work out a lot. So supplementing with sodium makes a big difference. Um, and I noticed this. Yeah, I don't I, eat lots I brought of that up because I noticed it personally. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Next question is from official Bruce Love. What is your opinion about pills or tablets called carb blockers? Yeah, I, I picture like this. <laughs> this would be so awesome no. so I could eat those cinnamon rolls whenever yeah. I want. It's like, I picture like so this. So it just goes right out you, yeah. you know? No, dude. You know what they are? So here's what carb blockers are. They're com components that help with insulin sensitivity or reduce the, the, you know, the glucose spike you may get um, after eating a carbohydrate meal. Are there potential benefits to that? Yeah, there may be. Are they fat loss? Not really. Um, not really. I mean, maybe down the line because you're maximizing insulin, whatever, but largely a complete waste of money. Yeah, well, not if if all cal if all things are equal and calories yeah. are still staying up, then no. It's no, I mean, it might help with appetite. For I'm, I'm, And by the way, I'm being super theoretical. Yeah. Now, based off of what I've seen with these carb blocker or whatever, and you know what the first one was that I remember? Do you guys remember chromium picolinate? Do you remember no. that supplement? No. This is back when we were tra early trainers. This was like the first like increases insulin sensitivity and you utilize carbs better or no. whatever. Uh, it's just a it's a, a micronutrient that you know you, if you're lacking it and you and you supplement with it, there's maybe some potential benefits. But that was the first time I heard of that. Then they came out with more. I talked about alpha lipoic acid earlier in this podcast. That has been advertised <laughs> as a carb blocker. It is not a carb blocker. There is no such thing as a carb blocker. This is a complete, almost complete waste of money. Uh, supplement category. Right. It, it, I've never seen advertised. it marketed the way you just described it. Yeah, like, no. It's all like, you know, I can have pizza and then I can still lose weight. And like, it's just like the most ridiculous claims around these things. No, you know, there, there's also like, um, the, I've seen in the past, like fat blockers because you'll eat, they'll, you'll take a bunch of fiber, supposedly binds to the, the fat so <laughs> you don't absorb it and you poop yeah, it out yeah. or whatever. Um, no, total waste. There's There's nothing that really does this doesn't work that way so and it's all it's all bullshit uh, marketing don't waste your money now you may if you have issues with glucose and you have issues with like blood sugar and insulin there may be some benefits to some of the stuff again i remember back in the day it was chromium picolinate vanadyl sulfate was another one that they used to talk about all the time now you're seeing other you know other products being touted as you know doing you know blocking carbs which I hate because I think it will definitely gives someone the false impression that, oh, I'm going to eat a bowl of pasta. Let me take my carb blocker pills, and now all I have is- like Everything's going to be okay. No. Because yeah, I took this pill preventatively. No, it doesn't work that way. Now, here's something interesting that you-, you can I imagine for like, I mean, potentially for like diabetics, this could have some value, right? Could be, but you know what's funny? People who are diabetics who carefully monitor their blood glucose yeah. have to be careful when they supplement with some of the stuff because- after a while, you've got it dialed in, yeah. and now what you may actually do is have start to run into some issues with low blood sugar. So I wouldn't do this without uh, doctor supervision, uh, no matter what. Now, what I was going to say with carbohydrates, and I think this is with rice, if I'm not mistaken. I believe if you cook rice, put it in the fridge, let it cool, and then warm it up again, some of the starch in there becomes uh, resistant to absorption. So you actually eat less carbohydrates in the same serving of rice. Maybe Doug can, what? can look this up. Yeah. You can do this with certain foods. I think it's like it's like double cooked rice or something like that. And you can do this with certain foods. 
Uh, you're gonna have to look this up. I don't remember specifically. Well, I remember you bringing it up, and I looked it up with the brown rice in terms of having the uh, like the anti nutrient properties. That's different. Too. Yeah, that's different. But yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, there was something about, about that. cooking rice, letting it cool so it's in the fridge, and then you eat it again, and then you u- utilize less of the starch. Huh. That's in the rice. Weird. Yeah. I don't know how big of an effect it is. And to be honest, I might be misquoting <laughs> what I read. <laughs> so that's why I'm having Doug uh, try to look it up. But uh, but yeah, car blockers, uh, total waste of money. Yeah, I wouldn't save, I would, save your money. Save your money. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is at in, on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 